Ladies and gentlemen, when I say the words live service game, is the first thing that comes to your mind getting sick to your stomach? <laughs> it, it sure does for me, especially for what we've been going through as of recent for gaming in this industry. We've been inundated with live service games, and unfortunately, plenty of them have been nothing but garbage. And though there are handfuls that come out that are pretty good, typically those good ones fall into the hands of smaller industries the bigger named places like blizzard or activision or even 343 industries or bungie they seem to have an idea on what live service gaming is because of the amount of stuff that they put into content and all that but they don't do it in a way that is healthy enough for us players to where we want to stay active in that community. Now, the entire purpose of live service gaming is to add stuff into your game to make it more engaging and to retain that engagement amongst players for years to come, pretty much to extend the life of the game until either the company comes out with a sequel to it, a proper sequel to it, or it just dies on its own. And though I agree with the concept, and I do like the fact that live service games provides extended life to the games that I would love to play, unfortunately, a lot of these companies tend to do things to the game or don't do anything to the game to where it ends up sacrificing that lifespan significantly to where it's cut shorter than what it needed to. And I feel like this is very representative amongst the bigger named industries, especially because those bigger named industries tend to have big name titles with it, such as Halo Infinite or Diablo 4, where they are serviced games that are supposed to keep people playing for as long as they can, and though maybe they have good retention right now, they lost a lot of people due to their poor decisions that they made. And I feel like, though, it would be a disservice to discredit the big name industries that are good at live services, and I feel like the biggest one out of all of them is Rockstar. GTA 5 to this day is still receiving plenty of updates. This game came out over a decade ago and it is still a highly rated game, still played amongst hundreds of thousands of people and they're going to continue to do so until GTA 6 comes out and who knows what's going to happen then. And though I'm sure there are still plenty that are out there that are good live service games amongst the big name industry, we have to think about it as where they sat at the time where back in those days, games were still made with heart and creativity. And I'm talking like GTA 5 came out in what, 2013? That was a long time ago. I'm talking about today, 2024, and even the past couple of years, these bigger named industries that have these titles kind of made them not worth playing. And though some people do still give their money, like I've given my money to these industries, it's made me in a way, regret giving my money to them, but all it's done is just made their pockets bigger and mine I just have a burning hole inside of it. But unfortunately, a lot of companies have found out that if they can charge people within their own games after they have already purchased it, if they had to buy it in the first place, that they could make more money. And it's done a very, very big thing for all of these companies, a model that they are able to create for themselves to where they could create infinite cash from a game that can exist and don't get me wrong if a game is good and you are willing to give your money to it so be it but unfortunately a lot of games nowadays have seemingly been half-assed where they just come out with a product that isn't fully done yet and people are still willing to give hundreds of thousands of dollars away to make these people feel content about themselves and the industry content about the product that they are creating. I've already given two examples, Halo Infinite and Diablo 4, where Halo Infinite came out pretty strong right out the gate, though yes, it didn't have a lot. It was, at the time, one of the few functional games that had been released, but unfortunately, that well dried super quick because they weren't able to produce the content that they were projecting to uh, the audience, and it ended up causing people to stray away because they overpromised, oversold a game that was meant to be free and they locked so much of the content behind paywalls to where people just felt bored. 
with the game, and it, myself included, being a huge Halo fan, ended up not liking Halo Infinite enough to keep me there, and then it plummeted off a cliff, though yes, Halo Infinite has improved over time, it's taken a lot to try and recover its losses and still hasn't fully recovered from what it was when it released. And then Diablo 4 is probably, in my opinion, a big named scam because it was fun-ish for like the first few minutes until you realized how much walking you had to do and how much time was taken away from walking and how everything just felt the same and you didn't really feel any different in the progression system and then once you got your horse it was already too late because by that time the new season had came out and they were going to reset everything and it's just a huge huge weird mess and we're not even going to get into their microtransaction system because that was just predatory and then as of recent we have rocksteady's suicide squad kills the justice league where it barely was even functional to begin with and then on top of that just very little creativity behind it with weird animations and boring enemies to fight and just a weird story overall just the entire game was weird let's just say that and i think a lot of people agreed because upon release it didn't even, it barely even cracked i think 20,000 players concurrently and it's currently sitting less than 500 active players so it really goes to show but like what rocksteady failed at in terms of the creation that they were trying to make they they couldn't even commit to a live service game because it just wasn't functional from the start and then you could say the same with skull and bones being the next example from ubisoft where a lot of people are comparing it to black flag because a lot of its mechanics are from black flag but it ends up offering less and it looks less quality than the actual game of black flag and how they've butchered so many of like the animations for the fights and making it cut scenes and it's just a, an all overall mess of just a pure laziness and cash grabbery so why is it that these big named industries are just failing at live service games well to be honest with you i'm not in the industry so a lot of this is just my opinion and maybe you can agree with me or if you are in the inside and you know why or have been a part of it leave a comment down below i'd like to see what you have to say about this but my opinion on what makes these live service games from these big named industries pretty poor in quality at least as of recent is corporate greed being the top priority a lot of these companies tend to be focusing on money 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 especially after the game has been released whether if the game was free to play or you had to pay 70 dollars like diablo and then pay even more money to just go anywhere throughout the game these companies are expecting to try and pull as much cash as they can beyond the sale price of the game. A lot of their money comes from these microtransactions. And why are they being put into this game and making this quality of the service that they're giving unto us very poor at best? Because they're trying to create a system that allows players to be engaged by spending more money to get the things that gets them to where they need to be or gets them to looking how they want want to look and then that money can then be used to pay off sponsors or investors who put their money down on this game so that way these companies can make their money back from the losses of time and talent that they put into just to produce a half-assed game and with these big name companies making multi-million dollar games the longer this game is in production the more money it takes away from the industry so it forces the developers to create these predatory tactics to make the industry more money so that way it can pay off whatever it lost and then it forces the developers to release the game earlier than expected and just kills it upon landing. That's where you end up with games like Suicide Squad, where it wasn't ready for something like this. Even if the game was going to be good in general, which I don't think it would have been, but if it was a functional game, it probably would have kept retention for a little while before people realized how boring it was. But it doesn't matter in the end, because they still had to push something out, because time is money, and the more time that this product is not being out there, the more money that the company is losing. And then that's where we get that big problem of money over quality, because that is something that the companies are prioritizing. They're focusing 
more and how much money it's able to pull rather than the quality of the game because truly the quality of the game is what keeps its longevity if the game is not a quality game whatsoever then why are people going to stick around to begin with and that's where i feel like these smaller gaming industries don't really have that problem because like i said they're smaller they're smaller in terms of manpower they're smaller in terms of budget so you don't have that overarching entity that is forcing them to release a game earlier than expected and result in a game that is dead on arrival. And that's where we end up with games like Pal World and Helldivers, where both are live service games that have come out within 2024 and are already doing better than most of the games that have come out within the past few years. It's doing, both of them combined are doing way better than any of the previous games that I had just mentioned right now across all platforms and why is that why do these smaller games have much better quality than any of the other games that have come out and it's because they understand who the gamer is they know who they're trying to sell to they know that if i create something that actually has heart in this that has so much content that ha that'll keep somebody entertained for hours on end then they're going to stick around for however long they want and will probably give their money away and a great example of that is helldivers 2 myself included i've been playing helldivers as of recent and i also have joined the train of upgrading my game to the premium version because i want to give my money to arrowhead they deserve this for the type of quality of game that it is sure it's not the best looking game out there but god damn is it so much fun to play it reminds me of the old days of halo where you just hop on just kick ass and just be like do everything that you can with your friends it is just such a great game and power world is another great example too because it is just the game that a lot of people wanted out of a pokemon series where now we've grown into a, a state where we want to create a lot of stuff around us build homes have our little house and, and run around catching our pokemon and of course the guns obviously right giving pokemon's guns and uh, all that stuff is great but we can't do that with Pokemon, and that's what Power World is for. And both of these companies have come out saying that they are still going to be adding new stuff, even though, yes, Helldivers did have a huge problem with their servers, and that sort of tanked their reviews, which I think should be a good thing that they were having problems with their servers being at capacity, because that just shows that so many people wanted to play this game that they needed to invest more money in server space so that way they can allow for a bigger player base. People are turning away from the bigger industry because they just keep producing crap and the crap is mainly so that way they can get something pushed out and then make their money off of it now unfortunately a lot of people will still buy it and there are times where i am a victim of it too and it basically perpetuates the problem because all it's saying to the bigger companies is hey people bought the game and it's made us enough money but i'm, I'm getting away from the point the point i'm trying to make is that smaller companies are doing much better than bigger companies as of recent and whether if there's a correlation between these big companies doing bad because of how big they are because if you look at those same companies when they were smaller and the quality of the games that they were producing it is very strange to say the least i mean the biggest example i can think of is bungie where when they first started out that we had myth we had marathon and how good those games were and then halo came out and it just basically made bungie the spearheading industry of the 21st century at the time with and created its sequels on top of that, Halo 2, Halo 3, ODST, Reach, and how great those games were. And then once they left and became a much bigger company under Activision and started creating Destiny, Destiny, the first one, was pretty good. I thoroughly enjoyed it. And then Destiny 2 came out and something happened where the live serviceness of Destiny 2 ended up being so predatory, so against the player, that even though it still has a decent population, I feel like those people that are still playing are the ones who have invested a lot into that game, even though 
those are the same people that still cry about a lot of the problems that come out, especially when they haven't added anything to the game in sense of vehicles, except for as of recent, where they're going to be adding a vehicle that is very reminiscent to another game that I'm just going to mention right now, that is much better than most of the other games that this in industry has created, and has been out for just as long as some of the oldest games on the list that I've just mentioned, Warframe. Warframe is by far, in my opinion, the best live service game out there. Not just because of the amount of content that they constantly add, not because of the the way how the gameplay is out there and just absolutely insane and fast paced or and if you like that kind of stuff, but also it's free. This game, a live service game that has been adding content for nearly a decade since its inception, is free. You could have paid for it if you got the Founders Edition or whatever the name of it was, but this game that has free to play and is still free to play and is still constantly adding new material. Oh my god. Like, how, how do people in the industry not recognize a game like Warframe and say how much of a success it was? That, that game, by far, is Digital Extreme's best game ever and when soul frame comes out who knows they're gonna be it's gonna be hard to try and play the both of them it's already hard right now trying to keep myself off of hell divers from all the other games that i have available but you cannot discredit warframe from being a live service game and a, being the best live service game in the entire industry that is my opinion if you have a different opinion on what you think the best live service game is leave it down below some people might say fortnite and i would agree i don't li like fortnite all that much but i have to give her respect where respect is due but due to the games that i like warframe is number one but yeah people are turning away from the bigger corporations in gaming big gaming whatever you want to call it and they're starting to turn to the smaller developers and i think rightfully so because not just because these smaller developers deserve to have the attention needed but they are doing something far more right in terms of what we as gamers appreciate in the industry compared to what these big namers think that they need to do for themselves. If you liked the video, give it a like. Subscribe if you like this kind of content. I'm out of here. I'll catch all y'all later. Peace.